Hey everybody. Today we are going to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart and that is nitrate and nitrate toxicity. And I'm going to talk about why I'm always so concerned about nitrate and why I talk about nitrate. Uh, but before I get into that, I actually read an article the other day and just to make sure you all know it's there, if you don't watch much of this video, at least know that there's a link down below to an excellent article that absolutely 100% vindicates everything I've said about nitrate over the last 10 years. It's absolutely worth the read. So if you do nothing else and take nothing else away from this video, at least go down and check out that link and read the article. It is an article, not a scientific paper, so it reads more like a narrative. It's much easier to read, but it does go over a lot of different scientific studies and it breaks down the findings and explains them in layman's terms and really gives you a very, very good idea of just how not big of a deal nitrate really is. Nitrate is absolutely the boogeyman of the aquarium hobby. We blame everything on nitrate and nitrate is really just not that big of a deal. Now, having said that, I don't want to say nitrate is also something that can be ignored. It does contribute to the quality of life in our tank. It contributes to algal growth. It contributes to whether our plants do well or not, depending on how much you have in there. So nitrate's not something that can simply be ignored in your aquarium. But this idea that nitrate has some sort of toxicity level to your fish and is harmful to your fish is just absolute nonsense. And that's why I talk so much about it. When I first got into the hobby, I read so much stuff about red is dead and nitrate is the silent killer. And there's just so much information out there that's bad information that would have the average new fish keeper terrified, like I was, of nitrate. I ran myself ragged trying to do water changes to get the, the, the nitrate down to an acceptable level and I wound up doing more damage and harm with all of my water changes and keeping my tanks all out of whack and off balance. If I'd have just ignored the nitrate, my tanks would have settled down long, long before they finally did. And it took my own experience of me simply seeing that what people were telling me was not true. I was being told that fish can't survive in levels of nitrate like this and yet here I've got fish that are breeding in it and I have fry that are surviving in it and I'm being told fish can't even live in nitrates of this level. I'm told that if I do too much of a water change the nitrate shock will kill the fish and yet none of my experiments, none of my experiences or experiments because eventually I did start getting into experimenting with nitrate and deliberately allowing it to get as high as I could get it and nothing lined up with what anybody was telling me. So I started doing research on nitrate, just trying to find out what nitrate is, what makes it so dangerous, what is it actually doing to the fish, why is it killing my fish? And what I found is that it's not, there's nothing out there that tells you what it's doing to your fish, because it's not doing anything to your fish, it's pretty much inert. It's the end product of what starts out as something that could potentially be harmful, like ammonia, and it gets converted into the harmless nitrate that just then gets expelled. The other aspect of nitrate that most people don't ever take into consideration is that your fish aren't consuming the nitrate that's in your aquarium. They're simply swimming around in it. It doesn't absorb through their skin. Now, of course, they do swallow some water and that sort of stuff when they're feeding and everything. So they are getting some of it in their bodies, but they're just, they're not consuming nitrates all the time. When they eat plant material, when they eat algae, when they eat algae wafers, or you put those peas or broccoli or zucchini in your tank, that is feeding them loads of nitrate and they're consuming tons of nitrate when they consume that um, plant material. It's loaded with nitrates. If you look at our diet, the leafy green vegetables are loaded with nitrates. Nitrates are just not these terrible bad things that do stuff. They're, they're just not. And so when I started reading this article the other day, it just completely vindicated everything I've ever said about it. Um, it went down and the first thing it points out is that when you're doing a scientific study and you're looking at nitrate the way they look at nitrate, they look at it as like a one-to-one -one ratio of nitrogen, whereas our aquarium test kits are measuring the total nitrogen or total nitrates. Again, I'm a little confused on the uh, chemistry behind it, but in short, we have to take what their findings are and multiply them by 4.4 times. So all those studies I read before where I thought those numbers were huge, 
they were only a quarter of the size that they should have been. I was seeing numbers that were eight, 900 parts per million. They should have been more like two or 3,000 parts per million if we were doing our aquarium test kit. And this is levels that fry can live in, in most cases. And it's, it's just, again, it's just stop worrying about the nitrate. The nitrate is a good proxy. It's a nice, easy way to test your aquarium to get an overall feel for what's going on in there. There's 57 different things that you can keep track of by testing this, that, and the other thing. But rather than do that, if you just kind of keep an eye on your nitrate and you've got a basic, simple aquarium system set up, it's it's just a nice, easy way to sort of keep an eye on what's going on in the tank and know when to do water changes and that sort of thing. Now, as far as this when to do water changes part of it, uh, 40 parts per million is the industry standard for some reason. I didn't know why then. I still don't know why today, but I do have a theory that I'm going to share with you. But have it understood that 40 parts per million is an absolutely, completely, totally arbitrary number. There's no reason in the world why 40 parts per million means anything. It's, there, there, it's not some kind of Rubicon that once you've crossed it, there's no going back or it doesn't change how it's affecting your fish at that point. There's nothing significant about 40 parts per million, except when we use that API test kit, which is the most common test kit that we use. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, even the dip strips that we use will turn red as well. And that's the thing, is our brains see red and we just interpret that as bad. And 40 parts per million or so is right around when that color change is shifting into red. And I think that's why we've just sort of associate that 40 parts per million with danger because we see it changing red. If the API test kit changed to green, uh, you know, again, this is just a color change in a, in a chemical to, to, to indicate something. The red is no significance whatsoever. It could be green, it could be purple, it could be blue, it could be any color. It just happens to change into red. And when we see red, I think that's why we just associate that turning red with 40 parts per million and it's just it's gotten into the collective psyche that that 40 parts per million is some kind of bad, dangerous, scary number or something and it's absolutely arbitrary. There's no reason whatsoever to think 40 parts per million is bad. 400 parts per million is more likely where you should worry about nitrate starting to have some kind of an impact and even then you got a long way to go before it's the, the nitrate itself is having an impact. But as I've said early in the video, the there's other stuff going on in your tank. As the nitrate is accumulating, so are the phosphates, so are the hormone levels. You might have uh, the, the mineralization in your tank might be coming down, the pH might be shifting. A lot of stuff's happening in the tank. And so using that nitrate test that's very simple, especially if you just do a little dip strip, you can just get a good, quick temperature of what's going on in your tank and you get a snapshot and you can say, okay, we can do a water change because it's starting to get a little robust in there and it's time to you know, put some fresh water in there. But the nitrate themselves and the toxicity level and all this stuff it's doing to your fish and whether or not it's having any long-term impact on your fish, the article goes into depth about the long-term uh, impact of the fish. It even goes into depth about what I've always said about the API test kit and that is that you you virtually can't tell once it turns red at 40 parts per million you can't tell the difference between 40 parts per million and 80 parts per million the goal of most fish keepers is basically to kind of keep it reddish orange but not too red and keep it somewhere in there and that's it and that's all the precision we really need out of that so again if you do nothing else out of this video read that article don't take my word for this look into it you can cross-reference it's got all the links and everything to all of the the stuff studies that it did, and I think it'll put a lot of fish keepers mind at ease when they're so worried about you know, the little bit of nitrate that accumulate. If you do any kind of reasonable aquarium maintenance, you're going to keep your nitrate below the one or 200 parts per million, and that's fine. That's all you really need to worry about, and stop stressing out over nitrate. It's, just, it's not an issue. So that's my two cents. Maybe that's my five cents, but it's been 10 years in coming, and I've been waiting for this one article for a long time to completely vindicate. Finally, somebody else out there is saying what I've been saying for years, and it seems a little more official now. So there you go. Make sure you check that out. And 
And make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you leave me your thoughts down below. If you haven't already, I'd like to hear them. And I will see you real soon on the next one. Thanks for watching this one.